you know, there's a lot of choices when you're looking at movement holders, and they all have their advantages and disadvantages. Some are cheap, some are expensive. To start with, you have size specific holders like these plastic stackable kind, as well as higher quality versions like these ones made out of stainless steel. These will hold the movement, but there's really nothing securing them. So if you have to apply a little bit of torque to undo a screw, you know that the movement could come flying out and potentially damage a part like the balance wheel. Then you have the universal holders, which we all know. And these are often considered cheap because a lot of them are inexpensive, but mostly it's because people struggle with the movement flying out when you try to hold it in the upper part of the jaws. The problem with this upper area is that there's very little metal to hold the movement securely. And it's especially a problem if you still have the plastic movement ring attached to the plate. Now, there's not really an issue securing the movement when it's in the lower part of the jaws, but because the jaws are so tall, when you're trying to remove or replace a bridge, I find that it's harder to get a good angle on the bridge because the movement is sitting so low in the jaws. This video was really inspired by a conversation I was having with a couple of my patrons, Paul and Ray, on our Reddit sub. And the answer is really so simple. I can't believe I haven't thought about it sooner. To start with, I screw the jaws all the way in and then just use a file to remove the top part of the jaws. Since these movement holders are made out of aluminum, you could also do this with sandpaper or even a flat sharpening stone, but a decent metal file does it really fast. All I'm really trying to do is remove the top part of the jaws, reducing the height and just eliminating the useless top part that really doesn't work and just gets in the way. Now, after you do the filing work, just rinse it off with hot water, and then either run it through an ultrasonic cleaner or whatever you have, because you really want to get the filing dust off. Then just apply a very thin film of grease, kind of like you might do uh, lubricating a mainspring, and you're good to go. Now with the upper section gone, I can now securely hold the movement and have plenty of access to the top bridges. And guys, that's it. You can turn an inexpensive movement holder into one that you can trust and count on every time. And if you can prevent just one damaged movement, you will be one step closer to being a better watchmaker.